I, I don't think the game changed that much. I think it's uh, you guys are just kind of experiencing the game from the beginning. And uh, probably the mission you saw at Gamescom you will see later or at another moment. So obviously uh, there's been a lot of polish, a lot of uh, rework of mission and flow and you know and improving the, 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 the systems and the gameplay so that's what's been going on we're basically finishing the game for you guys to enjoy one thing I have to say about the delay is it's not as long as people think you know because you need to submit you need, you need so there's months dedicated to submitting polish you know and printing the game and distribution so for us it's a few months uh, it's it's that it's finishing the game. You know, if if we had shipped, we would have had to cut. We would have to make bad choices. And when we arrive to that point, saying we cannot make it, we cannot finish it, we'll have to you know make it cheaper. We said no. Like so, we made that decision to extend it, and then it allowed us time to play a finished game. And Playing a finished game helps helps you make smart decisions because before everything comes together, there's some things you don't know, you don't see, you don't exactly get the final feeling of it. So having a finished game allowed us to make those good decisions and then you know, really polish all the elements up. I mean, it's all an, an, an anecdotes. You know, if I would start to say the hundreds of things that change, it's all like anecdotes. You know? The big things I would say is their variety in the reactions of AI as a hacker. That was definitely something we wanted to push further and we were not happy with. It's a creative process at some point you you could go on forever you know uh, making a create a, a creative I mean a creation like this could go on forever so at some point we just have to say okay this is we're happy with it this is the experience we wanted to deliver going forward means we have to break it and you know fix it so we said no that's this is it this is the game we want to deliver so yeah I'm very excited very happy uh, it, it's going to feel great to finally um, put it out there after four years and a half for me personally. It's, it's, it's a long development period. Uh, I mean, everything that's connected to the infrastructure for us was a toy the player could use. You know, the, the ch L train, the heating system, uh, you know, all the electrical system. So anything that's connected, you know, the traffic lights, anything that's connected to the network is something we could use. On top of that, all the civilians have their own info that you can use as well, and that will unlock side missions and you know give you content. So anything that's connected basically is is a toy, is something for the player to use as as a weapon as well. We want to put a lot of depth, meaning there's a lot of interactions you, you can use, and there's definitely a, a learning watchdogs because there's a lot of new things just just hacking itself is how to be effective as a hacker is something you need to learn and we put a lot of energy on the skill tree to put create videos and show the the gameplays you could do and you know that's it for us it was a tool to have players become good at watchdogs but yeah you have to invest time and you have to experiment and you have to you know, have fun I think the controls are accessible enough and the, the, the way the hacking works is accessible enough that you know it, it kind of embeds itself nicely in the other gameplay so it, it, it's fairly accessible and I, I mean in playtest it's going, it's going well but yeah when you start there's a lot to learn and there's a lot of things in this game. You, if you play only the main mission you cannot unlock everything. So you have to do open world, you have to do online, so we really wanted the open world and the other activities to be meaningful. But all the choices you make are really important, So, so it, and it's progressive. I mean, every uh, few missions you have something to unlock, so it allows you to learn the game at the same time. So we really wanted that to be a process that's kind of ongoing. And then when you're in the game, you can experiment with it. So for us, it was a way actually to pace the learning curve, but you're right. Having everything is quite a long time, but again, it's quite a big game. So I mean, you have to, if you want to invest the hours, then it's great. We, we're aiming for like 40 hours for a normal experience. So that's 50% main missions, 50% for your own. So like something like that. But for, for players who do everything, we think it's uh, more than 100 hours. So it's a lot, but that's for a certain type of players that are, you know, a, completionists and there's also online I'm also not counting online or digital trips in that number that's something that if you're into you can participate and uh, you know it's something that you can choose or not depending on the type of player you are
<laughs> we, we, we like to think of it as surveillance. You know, as uh, Aiden Pierce, you can you have all these, these abilities, you can use the cameras, you can observe other players, you can get that, that info, but we felt it was not complete if you did not live it. So as a player, you have to have, you have, to have that feeling of being observed, of someone is watching you. So these gameplays are kind of meant to blend in that experience and to give you that feeling that there's other people out there watching you. And these game players are like hide and seek, uh, technology hide and seek, and you need to steal data and run away with the data. So we created game players that were not necessarily about immediately killing each other, but more about you know finding each other and using observation and technology to, to win. Uh, but yeah, it's, the core is surveillance. Uh, this, the surveillance system in Chicago, in Chicago is one of the mo most advanced in the world. So definitely that aspect is really close to reality. The CTOS allowed us to embed like the train, the traffic lights, the whole infrastructure into the, the game a, as a tool because that doesn't exist yet. So we kind of took that freedom. Yeah, but so anything you had a, a access to their information that the player sees. <laughs> we, we're trying to obviously make fun interactions and fun gameplay out of these elements so you know escaping the police using the train or you know slowing down enemies you know with the car crash are elements we want to use but they're elements that you can could potentially interact with if they were controlled by a central operating system like the CTOS so that's the aspect we took some freedom with but it was for the benefit of the player in the end it's today really or near future we we wanted we wanted the themes to be relevant, you know, we really want players to think about what they're doing and how that affects their lives. So all of these elements are in a way based on reality or based on things we've seen before. And I think the cyberpunk aspect comes naturally because of the themes, because of the way we kind of push technology forward. But for us, the most important is to make it meaningful and to make it resonate as something that's contemporary, that's something that can happen and will happen because it's all of these things are really around the corner. So players feel that you know they're playing something relevant and something that feels like it's it's now, it's not in you know, 50 years. It's really, really around the corner. Uh, I, it'll be as good as your PC. <laughs> so I mean, the, if you have a very strong PC, it'll obviously be, be better. So I mean, it's if you have a terrible PC, it will not run. I mean, it really depends on the strength of your PC. But I mean, it, all, all of these devices are as, as efficient as the hardware they, they come in with. So, I mean, in a way, they're all computers, you know, and we're working with the, the hardware we have available. Uh, I mean, obviously, we, we get influences from a lot of places. It can be, it, it can be that, like science, science fiction. We, there's a lot of TV series, you know, there's a lot of social gaming, there's games. We, we, we try to, I mean, the way, I think that explains it the best is we if we have a need you know we're trying to make a, a game with a certain story context we have a need for something we'll try to look at what's the best and most efficient way to make that into something a mechanic and then we obviously can look at you know references depending on is it a story need is it a mechanical need is it you know a gameplay need or a mission need or or try to find the element that will you know work for it Definitely, I mean, the team is hundreds of people, so the influences are all around and are very varied. I, I think there's something rich also about that, like a big team with multicultural you know, roots. You know, it helps being very creative. Uh, I, uh, I started four years and a half ago. Uh, I, I did not know that much about the project, but for me, it was it was really that is is creating something simple accessible like affecting the world in an efficient way you know becoming a master hacker you know was was kind of the goal and and with with a story that's a personal story and that resonates with people uh, I have a background in literature so for me stories are important but then the gameplay that's the player story so as a designer giving control to the player making something unique and his and no one else will live it the same way like no one else it's there's so many elements that can change that what you play in this game is totally you know, you know your own moment your own experience so that was the goal you know it's a, it's a style of design like systemic design is a style